Hey everyone, I'm Dave from Mathagon, and in this video I'm going to share with you our Polypad updates for November 2021. So here I am at mathagon.org. I'm going to use the link at the top to head over to Polypad. First thing to point out at the bottom of the tile menu is a link called What's New. There you can see all the features we've added to Polypad in November. I'll be talking about all of these in this video and I'll start with the compass and the set triangle. Those are under utensils here. I'll click on the set triangle to add it to the canvas. You can use these black circles to change the size of the set triangle. Once you have a size you like, you can draw a triangle in a number of ways. I'll start with the pen tool and I'll click and drag to draw a line along each side of the set triangle to make my right triangle. So there's one way to make a triangle. I can also use the ruler tool to make a triangle. Maybe I want to make one where the legs of the right triangle are different lengths. I'll go to the ruler tool, maybe make it purple, and I'll do one line that is, oops, let me try that again, erase that line, go back to the ruler. I'll draw one side that's four, one side that's three, and then I can move the triangle out of the way and use the ruler tool to connect the, the ends of that triangle. You can see it kind of snaps into place when I'm using the ruler tool. There's another right triangle. So that's the set triangle. Let's take a look at the compass. I'll zoom out a little bit uh, and move the compass down here. So the compass, I can change the size of the opening of the compass with the black circles. Once I have a size that I like, I can click and drag to create a circle with the compass. Of course, these can be used to construct a number of things in geometry. I'll do one example here. I'll put a line segment on the canvas. Let's say I want to find the midpoint of that line. I'll put the compass on one end of the line and make sure this goes beyond what I would estimate as the midpoint. Draw this circle and then move the compass to the other point on the line, draw this circle. There we go. And then I can draw a line to connect the two points where these circles intersect. And then I can put a little line right in the middle and I found the midpoint of that line segment. The next thing I want to show is our new sliders and variables. I'll start by putting an equation on the canvas. Maybe I'll do y equals 3x plus 2. Make this bigger so we can see it and move it over here. I'll add a coordinate system onto the canvas. And you may know that when you take this blue triangle and drag it onto the coordinate system, it'll graph that equation. I'm going to change my scale of the coordinate system to go by tens. So this is not new. What, what is new are the sliders and variables. So I'll put an A variable and slider on the canvas. You can see when I click on the variable, an options menu appears in the upper right. I'm going to change my range from negative 20 to 20. I will have it bounce, so I'll keep everything else the same. When I click the play button, you can see that the values of A are changing between negative 20 and 20. When I pause it, you can see it's going up by 0.1 and the duration is two seconds if I want it to go uh, slower, I could change that to four. If I wanted to do a loop instead of bouncing, I could loop it. And you can see at the end of this, it'll loop back to the beginning. That's going much slower. I could pause it here. Let's go back to a duration of two. Maybe I want it instead of an increment of 0.1, I want it going up by one every time. And I just want to do it once. So now when I do, it, you can see it's going up by one and then it stops at the end goes from negative 20 to 20, I can pause it along the way, but it'll only do that once, all right? I'm gonna go back to an increment of 0.1, I'll keep the duration of two and I will do the loop. Now you can see as I hit play, nothing is happening on the equation because there is no A in this equation. So instead of doing three X plus two, I'm gonna do A times X plus two. And now you can see that the line is changing as the value of A is changing. I could pause it, and maybe I want this to do a bounce instead of a loop. I'll hit play, and there we go. And it's changing as the variable of A is changing. 
Let me pause it here. I'll change this from AX plus 2 to AX squared. See what's going on here. Now we can see how the parabola changes. AX squared plus 2. Super fun. All right, let me pause there. I'm going to change this back to just AX plus 2. And now I'm going to make this AX plus B. And then we'll put a B here on the canvas. I'll also have B go from negative 20 to 20. We'll do this on a loop. I'll hit play here, and I can hit play on this one. And both of, um, both of the variables are changing at the same time. I could pause one, and then play both, and pause A, and so on. So all sorts of great exploration and, can, and discovery can happen with the sliders. Maybe I'll bounce this one so it goes up and down as the value of B changes between 20 and negative 20. So we've seen the new compass and set triangle utensils. We've seen the sliders for variables. Let's explore the new option to evaluate equations on the canvas. All right, so the first thing I want to show you under settings is there's this new option called evaluate equations, which you can turn on and off. So I'll keep it off for right now. I'm going to add a fraction to the canvas, let's say 3 fifths. Make it nice and big here so we can see it, 3 fifths. And now when I select evaluate equations, it'll tell me that that 3 fifths is equal to 0 0.6. I could add some other operations onto this, 3 fifths plus 2 thirds minus 7 squared, and it'll continue to update the value of that expression, which is a, a nice convenient feature to have as well. You can turn that on and off again right under under the settings menu. The other option here is I can use the sliders with an algebraic expression. Let's say I do 3c minus 5. Make this a different color for us, maybe green. Make it nice and big. So there's 3c minus 5, but I can put the value of c on the canvas. You can see as soon as I drag it onto the canvas, it shows me the value of this expression is negative 5. I can hit play, and the value of that changes as the value of c changes. I could pause anywhere along the way and continue to explore um, what happens to that expression as the value of c changes. The other nice feature is all of these equations now um, function appropriately on the balance scale. So if I put the balance scale on the canvas, prior to this, if I wanted to get a fraction like 4 fifths on the balance scale, I'd have to go to the fraction bars, and let me show the number labels um, by unselecting hide number labels. And there's like two thirds, say, so I, I could split them and I could pull them apart and I could get the value of two thirds on the canvas like that. But now the any equation also works on the balance scale. So if I want to do an equation like four fifths minus two thirds and put that on one side of the scale, make it bigger here, I can turn off evaluate expressions. And if I want to figure out what 4 fifths minus 2 thirds is, let me actually do that calculation. Zoom out here. Here's 4 fifths. Well, that's 5 fifths. Let me make it 4 fifths. And here's 2 thirds. I can find a common denominator with uh, the rename option, make them both into fifteenths. And there I can see that 4 fifths minus 2 thirds is 2 fifteenths. I'll split these tiles and I can take these two fifteenths and just put them on that side of the canvas and it balances. So now the fraction bars, which have always worked on the balance scale, great. But now any equation that you create with the uh, equation tool at the bottom will also work on the balance scale. So that's a feature that uh, we're really excited to add as well. The next new feature is the ability to transpose data in a table. Here is a table of data that I want to make a box and whisker plot for. And I want a box and whisker for each row, A, B, C, and D. I click on the blue handle, attach it to the box and whisker, and I see that instead of getting a box and whisker for each row, I got one for each column, not what I was hoping. So if I click on the, ta on the table and select transpose at the bottom, the rows will become columns. There we go. So now I have a box and whisker for A, B, C, and D. Wonderful. 
The final thing to show you are sound effects. You can turn them on and off under settings. There is a sound effects box that you can turn on and off. And here are a few of the tile types that have sound effects. Here's a deck of cards. When you click shuffle, you'll now hear a shuffle sound effect. That is especially helpful because there's no action that you see when the deck of cards is shuffled. So the sound effect gives you confirmation that the deck is indeed being shuffled. There are some other sound effects for draw and turn over. And many of the probability tools have sound effects as well. As well as when you merge the number tiles. Wonderful. I hope this video was helpful in sharing with you all that is new to Polypad in November 2021. We have a lot more exciting updates coming in December and beyond, so make sure you stay up to date with those updates. A few ways to do that, make sure you are following Mathagon on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. You also can go to Account Settings and make sure you have this box checked under account settings where you, you will receive an email about new content and functionality. Again, thanks for watching.